Hello everybody, Rosie's shy, she doesn't want to play with me anymore, she just, she just ran away. And uh, I was thinking since I'm here and we have a wonderful day, I'm going to be talking about something that one of my virtual friends, Sebastian, hello Sebastian, he just wrote me about, he said that he's in a bad spot because he was planning all this time to, uh, to save money for GH6 and now that Canon came up with that uh, monster of a camera EOS R5 8K shooter, now he said, uh, I don't know exactly what am I supposed to do? And he kind of asked me, uh, what do I think about it? Uh, the reality is that I'm in the same bad spot because I've been waiting all this time for, uh, for Panasonic, because I'm a Panasonic shooter, to come up with a revolutionary camera. And when I heard that they're going to come up with a full frame mirrorless camera, I was so excited about it. I was saving and they came up with, uh, with S1, S1R and then S1H. All great cameras, full frame Panasonic cameras in a mirrorless body. That's a great, but that's that's great thing. But they were not exactly what I was waiting for because that 4K crop put me a little bit off. There was no 6K in S1 or S1R. Uh, we have 6K in S1H. So there were little things that uh, made me think that these cameras are great, are wonderful, but I'm gonna say pass on that one, waiting for this new GH6 to come up. And meanwhile, boom, Canon comes with EOS R5, world's first commercial digital camera, AK shooter. And I was thinking, man, time to switch gears. But there are certain things that I'm considering uh, if I should make that switch or not. Obviously, I'm going to save money for either one of the cameras. EOS R5 is going to launch, uh, or at least the rumors have it, that uh, it's going to launch in the summer, July 2020. Some of them are a little bit more precise about this date. We don't know anything about uh, GH6. And I was thinking I'm going to make a little bit comparison to answer to Sebastian and at the same time to make this video and at the same time to answer some of the questions that I have about these two cameras. Obviously, they cannot be put right now side by side because we don't have much about it we only have some things about cannons that are certain we don't have much if anything about gh6 just rumors that if you follow the panasonic logic supposed to be true to turn into into facts so let's see which exactly are those little things well they're not little things but they're things to consider as facts when we think about which camera we should save for so let's take canon eos r5 EOS R5, we know certain things for sure. We know that it's a full frame camera, no doubt about it. Canon releases full frame cameras in their mirrorless bodies, starting with this EOS R series. So it's a full frame camera, has a 45 megapixel sensor. That's not certain thing, but we know it's a pretty large sensor close to this 45 megapixels. It's a brand new sensor developed by Canon and it's going to shoot 8K. Obviously, they need a new sensor, a larger sensor, to shoot this 8K uh, footage. We also know for sure, because Canon said, that's going to have in-body stabilization, a Canon's first, so IBIS inside the body. When coupled with the IS from the lenses, it's supposed to give us the same type of, the same degree of stabilization, the same level of stabilization that we saw in Panasonic. Another thing that we know for sure is that Canon is going to come in 2020 with seven RF mount lenses. That's quite a lot. And that's one thing that I love about Canon, their lens selections and the quality of their lenses. And they're going to add to that two RF extenders to match with the old lenses that we want to put on this camera. So that's great thing. And these are the facts that we know for sure about Canon. Actually, there's one more thing. We know that's going to shoot 12 FPS in, uh, in a mechanical shutter mode. and It's going to shoot up to 20 FPS in an electronic shutter mode. That's another great thing, especially for photographers, for sports photographers. And that's another fact that we know for sure because Canon mentioned that in that press release, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm mistaken, sorry about that, guys. What exactly do we know about GH6? Well, we don't know much about GH6, if anything at all, because all we have as of right now is just rumors. Rumors, but then again, we have the logic of Panasonic patterns when it comes to developing these cameras. So following that logic, what we know, or we can say with the most certainty that we're gonna have in this GH6 camera, is that it's going to be higher than 4K uh, capable camera. Probably 6K like we have right now in S1H 
or even 8K just to match this capability of EOS R5. Although they're not in the same category. One is full frame camera, the other one, we don't know exactly what kind of sensor he has. There were some rumors back in the fall of 2019 that it's gonna be some kind of larger sensor, Super 35, maybe not full frame, but Super 35, that we have the option to crop to Micro Four Thirds. So it's kind of like a switchable format. Some cameras have that thing, and the rumors uh, said that the same thing about uh, about uh, GH6. So that's, that's a great thing to consider, but uh, like I said, that's not a fact. It's just something that uh, just leaked out and uh, Panasonic may go or may not go with that. On the other hand, this sensor has to be a large sensor because it has to handle that AK shooting if Panasonic will put AK into this camera. So if they go for that and kind of they have to go for that because uh, they announced it so many times that for the Tokyo Olympics of 2020, they want to come with something that uh, refers to AK format. They said many times. So I think they will not back down from this one. There may be some other factors that may play into this, but I think they really push for that. They're going to really push for that uh, AK, and that's why they're going to need a bigger sensor. I was a little bit disappointed when, the, when they launched the S1 because I was expecting a new sensor from them. They did not build a new sensor for that lineup. They just took an existing sensor and just built the camera around it. Uh, referring to Canon, Canon built a new brand new sensor with a brand new technology for the EOS R5. So I'm kind of expecting the same thing for them to do with the GH6. What else? Obviously it's going to have IBIS because Panasonic already got us used to that. Um, probably it's not going to have the same array of lenses because it's kind of hard to match uh, what Canon is offering in a world of lenses. Even if they have that uh, L-mount alliance behind them. Panasonic was never great at releasing a huge selection of native lenses. So I don't see that changing uh, with the GH6. So these are the things that we can compare between these two cameras with the little information that we have right now. Obviously throughout the spring Panasonic probably is going to leak more information. The rumor sites uh, will just come up with a little bit more details about this and probably we're going to hear a little bit more about Panasonic, maybe even an official development announcement, just like it happened with the EOS R5, probably throughout the spring, maybe at Fotokina in, uh, in Germany, uh, May 27th. We don't know, but I'm pretty sure Panasonic has no choice but to come with a replacement for GH5 this year and even launch that camera by the end of 2020. So knowing these facts, what exactly would be my option what I'm saving for. There are three things that I like about Canon. I always did. And number one, now number one thing that I like about Canon, it's its color science. Almost any footage that you can see anywhere in the world, you can say it's a Canon footage because they have such a great color science, especially when it comes to skin tones. That's one thing that I love about Canon. The second thing that I love about Canons is that dual pixel autofocus. It's it's extraordinary. Although, like I said it many times, I don't use it as much. I like the fact that it's a reliable autofocus system that gets you right where you have to be when you're focusing, when you base your work on autofocus. And more than that, the transition from autofocus to focus, it's so smoothly, it's cinematic. I love that about Canon. And the third thing that I love about Canon is that huge selection of lenses. That's a great thing. High quality lenses, very sharp, almost for any situation. You do not have to get out of Canon ecosystem to find new lenses unless you want to go down in price. But that's one thing that kept Canon customers for such a long time loyal to Canon, although they didn't innovate anything in the field of technology and, and so forth, capabilities, especially when it comes to video. So these are the three things that I really, really love about Canon. Now, if they, on top of that, they come with the AK camera, that has IBIS and all the other goodies that we have already in Panasonic, for me, that's a perfect camera. All I have to see from Canon to really make me buy this camera is to see their commitment of keeping innovating and not let themselves go, especially in a video department like they did it in the past. If I see that from Canon, I'm really, really considering getting this camera. On the other hand, on GH6, the great thing that I love about Panasonic is that they seem so eager to listen to its users. 
or every time when the feedback was overwhelming in one direction or another, Panasonic switched gear just like that. They were so quick to answer. They have a bunch of firmware updates, a bunch of upgrades, just to cater it to their, to their audience, to their clientele. And that's one thing that I love about Panasonic. Obviously, the second thing is their awesome stabilization. Like I said in the past, I can shoot with my GH5 and even my G7, especially when coupled uh, with uh, native Panasonic lenses, just like I'm using my, my uh, DJI M gimbal. That's how smooth they are, especially for short distances. If I don't have to do a lot of tracking movements uh, across a large distance, the stabiliz destabilization system of Panasonic is awesome. And that's what I love about it. One thing that uh, I will consider again, all the others being the same is the weight because in my special case working in travel industry doing a lot of hiking climbing being outdoor a lot weight is an important factor obviously these cameras they're going to be bulky cameras because they have to handle that heat dissipation but i am really will be considering the lighter camera all things being the same so these are my two cents about this. Hopefully that will answer your question, Sebastian. And to all of you that have the same, uh, you're in the same spot like we are. And we're going to save for something this summer. That's for sure. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell button if you want to get notified. And I will see you in my next video because I'm going to try to upload daily.